The Ballad of Thomas Crowley. I wanted to share with everyone the genesis of this piece that is uh, important to me. Uh, why is it important? Well, it comes from the heart, so it allows me to express some uh, deep emotions. This past uh, summer, my family and I rented a house by Lake Seneca in uh, New York State. And one evening I took my cello and I was playing music on, the, on a dock. And I had no music stand, I just started improvising. And this magical piece uh, came, uh, came out. Uh, I was concerned I'd uh, forget it, so I considered writing it down uh, or recording it, and I said, no, I'll remember it. So I played for, I played for a half an hour, this magical piece. Well, as luck would have it, next morning I woke up and I'd forgotten the whole thing. But it, it really uh, bothered me uh, because I thought it was a special piece. So I was yearning to, to get back into this creative, that creative mood. And sometimes uh, early September on a Monday, early evening, I had a half an hour be before a student of mine and I recreated the same mood and I started playing this piece. Um, and that's, that's, that's how the Ballad of Thomas Crowley was born. It took me three days to uh, compose the piece and um, I was happy to premiere it early October um, as part of the Lewis Chamber Players Concert Series in St. Peter's Church in uh, Lewis, Delaware. And uh, so, um, I entitled the piece for a beautiful surprise, The Ballad, that's how it was written in the program, because I knew Mr. Thomas Crowley and his partner, Minnie Shorter, were going to be there. They were in the first row. So I uh, addressed the audience and I told everybody two mistakes in the program. First of all, the year of my birth that was written in the program, I told them it's inaccurate because that's my alien number, not, not wanting any want to really know my birth yet. Uh, and second thing, the title of the piece is incorrect. So I went to Mini and I asked her to read the title of, uh, of the piece and, and she couldn't speak. She, she read it, but uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't speak. And, and she said that the, the, the ballad of Thomas Crowley and, and Tom was sitting next to her, he said, no, I don't believe this. He grabbed the music and he's reading it and he still doesn't believe it. Well, I was so nervous. I, I don't really get too nervous, at least not anymore. I was so nervous that performance. I was almost shaking just because of the emotion of the moment. Uh, so uh, this piece to me has a, an American feel, a bit of an Irish background uh, reference to, to Tom Scrowley, my, my good friend. And I think in many ways it, uh, it's, it represents him. Um, but why not uh, introduce uh, Mr. Crowley and uh, let him uh, share with all of us his uh, thoughts about the piece. So um, a wonderful piece, uh, I think a very relevant title, important to me. Uh, but for those who uh, don't know who Thomas Crowley is, they might imagine he's some historical figure, right? That, that, that's, uh, that's where the mind goes. Well, Thomas Crowley is right here. I'm privileged to introduce him to all of us and uh, shake uh, your hand thank for you, Owie. being the inspiration for well, the piece. Thank you very much, Ovi. I'm glad to be here. And let me start out by saying how appreciative and I'm actually in, still in awe that a piece is written for me. Uh, as you said, and during the premiere, I did grab the score from May's hands and read it. And I said out loud to all the people there for the concert, it's really true. It really was a ballad of Thomas yeah, Crowley. Yeah, it, it, it was true. And uh, so t tell, tell us- uh, I'm sorry I made you nervous. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> you went both ways. Okay. Right? Tell us a little bit about uh, who you are. Um, so well, connect to the piece, maybe. Yeah, I, well, I moved down to, to Lewis, Delaware, and met my partner, Minnie, in, in 2012. And I've um, been very active in St. Peter's Church, and, and uh, I should also say thank you and Sylvia uh, for being part of the Lewis Chamber Play, along with T.J. Thomas, as part of the St. Cecilia's Guild 
concert series. Right. Uh, I was actually the master of ceremonies that day, so I got to stand up and introduce the, the concert. And I don't have any trouble speaking in front of people because I have a background in appellate law and I've been an attorney for over 30 years. So I'm used to talking, or some people would say, I'm, I'm used to talking, period. Right. Well, I was used to talking in front of crowds. Yes. So, uh, and I've been, St. Peter's has also introduced me to music. I play in a handbell choir. Right. And that was a wonderful thing for me because I've, I've always enjoyed music, but before that I'd never been able to read or play music. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gave me both. Right. So it, it, it's wonderful to be in the same church where I play the handbells, having a piece written for me and the world premiere done at St. Peter's. Yeah, uh, honestly, this came to me so spontaneous. It's not something that uh, that is being done. So um, uh, we look at it as uh, just another way to share our friendship, right? Just over a exactly. meal or a conversation about politics or uh, or just over music. Exactly, and um, I think the piece very much describes me. I mean, I think you really got me in the piece. In what way? Well, it, it's, it's something you said in, in, in the first part of the interview. You said the American part and the Irish Celtic part, mm -hmm. which comes out, I think, mostly in, in the central part of the piece. Yeah. But it's, it's, as I listened to it more and more as we rehearsed it and we played today, yeah. it was just, yeah, that's you really got me, and I just... Yeah. I'm just, yeah. as I said, I just cannot thank you enough, and I'm just, I hope it gets a wide circulation. I hope your work gets yeah. a wide circulation, yeah. not yeah. because of my name on it, oh, that's, that's good too. Yeah, right. But um, yeah. it was from the heart, and I could, I could tell that from the first, first notes that you played that day in October. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tom. And uh, I think for, uh, for me, one of the first validations of this piece was um, when composer Diane Jones, uh, present at the premiere, said, this is the next, uh, next Ashoka's Farewell, the, the music from uh, the Civil War. Uh, she related to the piece as well. She felt that this piece w could be enjoyed by a large audience, and I hope uh, we can share it with them. Yes, it is a very accessible piece, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, what, what Diane said, because I had the same reaction. Once she says, you know, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That really, yeah. Yeah. that really clicks. Yeah. Well, I hope this is just the beginning of our musical adventures, and thank you for uh, um, being here and uh, being part of this, uh, the filming and recording of the piece. I hope so too, Obi.